Hello everyone and welcome back to Animation Pilgrimage, the show where Whitney and I take a look at every single theatrically released animated film in chronological order. I am Tanil. I am Whitney and welcome to the second to last film of 1981. You told me this was the last one last time. Well, yeah, but it turns out you all are just too kind and helpful. And have found us even more movies. Y'all are making liars out of us. <laughs> yeah, someone else found another film that uh, we will be watching, uh, another 1981 film that we'll be watching after this one. So we'll tell you what that is at the end of the review. In the meantime, we're here and we're going to talk about Old Master Q from Hong Kong. Yeah. Which is technically part of China. Yes. Yes, yeah. It's part of China, but specifically done in Hong Kong. Yes. This was a neat experience. <sighs> it wasn't very good, though. I hated this movie. Like, <laughs> I know last week you had a time with Dot, and, like, I don't disagree. It was a bad, like, like it was bad. But this grated on my nerves so much. I was counting the minutes until this was over. Ah, that's that's never a good sign. Yeah. Uh, the main problem I had with it wasn't necessarily like the character or anything like that. I think the character probably works fairly well as a comic book character, which he is. Yeah. How about... Hold on. Okay. My main issues with the film came from the fact of... Like, all was based around its production itself. The There was just an overabundance of yelling all the time on top of each other, where characters would say something and another character would start talking before the other character was finished. And, like, it was very loud. The audio quality wasn't great, and that could just be a fact that it's a little bit older. And then there was just, like, an overabundance of misused silly cartoon sound effects that just added to the noise, noise, noise factor. And then, to top it all off, the animation is done in a way where it's not there to necessarily serve the flow of the story. It's like every single action is, how can we make this wacky? And everything has the exact same pace throughout the movie. And it is all very fast and wacky and it never gives any of it the time to breathe. There was like two moments I remember specifically where characters just walked and there was silence. And I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> I was like, finally, I can breathe for a second. Anyway, that was my main problem with the movie. It's a bad movie, but the story and the characters are probably fine. Why don't we get into that? No. Oh, okay. I want to talk about like just a tiny bit of basic information about Old Master Q. Yeah. Old Master Q is a four-panel comic strip series that has been going on for a very long time in China. Uh, since 1962, in fact. Damn. Yeah, very... And is still going to this day. Wow. Yeah. Very, very, very long. I have actually experienced Old Master Q before. Wait, uh, I just realized since it's 1962, that means that it is literally 60 years old now. Yeah, it's exactly 60 years old as of the recording of this episode. Yeah. Wow. Neat. Anyways... As some people may know, most of you probably don't, I have four adopted siblings, all from China. Mm -hmm. I traveled with my family to go to China the first two, uh, the, 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 the times we adopted the first two kids. Right. So I've been to China a couple times. And uh, those two times happened when I was like 10 and then turning 13. And I experienced my 13th birthday in China. Yeah. And one, so all the gifts I got were... From China? Quickly bought Chinese, I don't know... Souvenirs. Souvenir crap. Right. But one thing that I did get that I really did enjoy 
was an old Master Q comic book. It was all what in are the Mandarin. Odds? Yeah, it was all in Mandarin, so I couldn't understand a lick of it, but I did get all of the slapstick, and it was enjoyable, and like quite a bit of it you could understand the context of what was going on without having to read the words. I would love to get my hands on some old Master Q that has been translated, mm -hmm. because I did quite enjoy it as a kid. Old Master Q, I, I'm fairly certain, is a fairly beloved comic series in China. It, it has the same level of, like, slapstick and smarmy humor that mm -hmm. you would get from, I don't know, something like Popeye, but that's not really a comic, or, uh, like, Asterix, the bull. Like, okay, yeah, these yeah. are, like, comic characters that are beloved by the country and are generally less known outside of it. I would say it would be kind of like Garfield. Yeah, that's what I kept thinking of when... Like, it's a very different brand of humor, but Old Master Q has the same kind of, like, charm to him as Garfield, but they're not similar characters at all. Mm -hmm. it, it would often have, like, a set... Like, because it's four panels, it's, like, got a set up. The explanation, uh, the, the fallout, and then the beat panel of, like, what? Yeah, burr, burr, burr. something silly happened. And in fact, at the beginning of this movie, it shows like two, three, maybe four uh, of these comics. They just like kind of dub over into a very basic animation of. Mm -hmm. And like one of the like the very first one is Old Master Q is auctioning off uh, like a very expensive vase. And like the first panel is like a uh, hundred thousand, uh, two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand. Sold for 500000 and he smashes the vase, and then the last panel is him just going, oh, oops. <laughs> uh-huh. That. Yeah. That's a fun little joke. It works very well. In this movie, they just decide to take it all 5,000% slapstick, and less of, like, just the witty banter between the characters that... I feel I assume like existed. this movie is missing the beat panels. Yes, it, it's missing the beat panels where characters just kind of go, oh. Right. It's all the action and silly, silly slapstick, which presumably they thought would be the correct choice when cha taking it to animation, but right. it doesn't work here. Yeah. Honestly, there's also, as we were doing a little bit of research, there was quite a few live action TV shows and movies that were made about Old Master Q before mm -hmm. and after this movie. Yeah. I'm wondering if those get the point across better, even though they don't have the ability to be animated. Right. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm i pretty sure we're going to run into another one of these movies, so long as we can find it. Um, oh, to know, and we I'm, have two more. Okay. The next two years. <laughs> that's right. That's right. You there are three of these animated Old Master Q films, three years in a row. I can only hope they can get they get better because, like I said, this was painful, and I don't think it's the fault. Like, it's not because like the original concept is bad. It's just like this movie was. Ugh. The movie is bad. And honestly, I'm probably, I have very similar feelings of this movie is bad as I do with something like Asterix, except I do have a little bit of nostalgia factor here, so I'm probably going to be less harsh on it. And that's just, that's just a fact of how I feel about it. Right. If I had never experienced Old Master Q when I was 13, when we watched these films, I would have ripped this thing apart. Right. Because it's garbage. Because it is. It really is garbage. This movie was <laughs> quite bad. Yeah. It's just, I know these characters and I know they can be better, so I'm more so disappointed than angry. <laughs> I'm disappointed. Be better, old Master Q. <laughs> anyway, do we want to talk about the plot? Yeah, let's do some plot. Okay, old Master Q is an old, poor man. He works at a restaurant. His boss is abusive and not very great, and he seems to be the only employee there. There's slapstick jokes based around him being a server. And then some gangsters show up, and they don't pay their bill, and so Old Master Q has to fight them, and they do silly things like throwing food at each other. Also, Old Master Q seems to be the only one who works at this restaurant. I said that, yeah. Yeah, he, he like he does all the dishes. He's the server, the waiter, mm -hmm. the, the cook. <laughs> he does everything, even though someone else owns the business. Right. 
after this day of work, he s decides to go out drinking with his friends, and they drunk call his the girl that he likes, even though they never actually date. It's just kind of his love interest that may or may not be one-sided. It's a little difficult to tell. Also, he's called Old Master Q, so I have no idea how old this guy is, but she is definitely a young woman. Uh -huh. We're gonna gloss over that, because she's not really in the movie that much. He decides that he needs to get swole because she doesn't like him, so he wants to learn fighting tactics. Conveniently, Bruce Lee decides to show up and beat up some random guys. Don't you love it when Bruce Lee just randomly appears? Because sure. poor Bruce Lee... <laughs> Everyone can just steal his likeness, and there's not a thing he could do about it, and he is dead. Yeah. Really frustrating. It just... It's another thing that just whenever I see it, I'm just like, hmm, that makes me just really uncomfortable. Anyways, Q decides to fight Bruce Lee, and he loses, and then he becomes a student of Bruce Lee, and Bruce Lee's going to teach him martial arts. Mm -hmm. Then we get a bunch of jokes about doing martial arts. Then we go back to him working in the restaurant again, and now they're like a speed restaurant, so he, there's jokes about him feeding people food really fast. And then there's a guy that's robbing the building that he lives in, and he's forced to help. Then they get caught by the police, and then they're in jail, and now there are jokes about him trying to escape jail, and then they escape, and then jokes about breaking the chain that's combining the two. As you can tell from this plot summary, this is all very much like... And then this happens. And then and this, this happens. happens. And, and then, then this, this happens. happens. And then this happens. Like, there's and technically there's... a through line, but the, the transitions between scenes and plot lines is non-existent. Right. Sometimes we literally will jump cut to a different scene and that had feels nothing like... to do. It feels like we just... there was a deleted scene somewhere mm -hmm. and they did not have time to polish how those transition through to each other. It feels like a compilation of a bunch of Comics? scenes from a bunch of different shows or mm. like episodes or something. Like mm. someone just cut it together haphazardly and threw it on YouTube. But no, this is just the movie. Right. Anyways... He escapes uh, the robber guy, and he decides to go back and do more martial arts stuff. Oh, wait, wait, they were in prison. Yeah, we're, we're already past that. They All escaped right. prison. They, they were chained together for a long while. Well, they really wasn't that long. Yeah. I already said we did jokes. Everything of, felt long. <laughs> they had jokes about breaking the chain, and they eventually get apart. And then he goes back and does more martial arts, and then he gets entered into a, a world competition martial arts fighting tournament. But the police are still looking for him? But yeah, because they still think he tried to steal a diamond. Anyways, the robber that he was chained to has a gang of other robbers, and those robbers steal a diamond. And then they run into each other, and they accidentally swap bags, so now Old Master Q has the diamond without realizing it. So now the robbers are looking for him, and the police are looking for him. And then they all get into a big tussle, and then Old Master Q's friend named Big Potato or something? I don't remember his name. Yeah, He's a short like guy that. with a big head. Uh, he accidentally swallows the diamond, so the robbers uh, capture him. And then we have a fight scene in a warehouse. And eventually, Old Master Q and his friends beat up and tie up the, the robbers, and then the police come. And then the police commissioner <laughs> accidentally swallows the diamond. And so the the surgical team is going to cut open his stomach instead of Potato Head's th stomach. And then the movie ends. Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> and Mr. Q gets away scot-free. Everything works out for him and his friends. The end. Ha 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 ha. Movie end with laughter. It did, didn't it? I mean, yeah. It definitely did. They just all standing around laughing. That's the movie. That's the movie. To be honest, like, it was all okay to bad. Like, there was nothing really great about this. If you can get your hands on some of the original Old Master Q comics, 
do that instead. Like, seriously. Though, like, that's definitely going to be more enjoyable than watching this movie. Yeah. I hope the other ones we have to watch are a lot better than this. I mean, they come out... Three movies come out in the course of three years. I'm not going to hold my breath that the quality is going to get too much better. <laughs> Don't say that. I'm sorry, but it's true. Anyway, this was a long, or is a long-running comic. Uh, started in 1962 to the present. Originally created by Alfonso Wong. And has then passed on to his eldest son, Joseph Wong. Chalk? Cock? No idea. I don't know how to pronounce Chinese, I'm going to be honest. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure. But it, in, his son is still doing it to this day. So, yeah. There wasn't really any um, more information about the movie itself other than there's just, there's quite a few adaptations of Mr. Q out there, both live action and animated. Mm -hmm. And so we'll be watching more of it. And I, I saw that there's more animated stuff made in like the 2010s mm -hmm. so like this will be coming back multiple times <laughs> over the course of animation pilgrimage not just the next couple years we'll see if it ever translates well to animation at some it's point. better at tra being translated yeah. yeah who knows anyway either way join us back here next time for another movie that we might just decide is the worst movie of the year because we're going to be watching Robot King from South Korea. Robot King. Time for more ripoff films. Woohoo! Let's go. <laughs> Oh,